All right, it's after six o'clock and I would like to ask you all to please stand and join me in a moment of silence as well as the pledge. Well, welcome again, folks. This is the public hearing on the introductory local law number six of 2015. The local law is entitled Orange County Ethics and Disclosure Law. And at this point, I would ask that all of you in the audience please make sure that you have turned off any of your cell phones or electronic devices. And at this time, I would ask the clerk to read the notice of public hearing. Notice of public hearing on introductory local law number six of 2015, a local law entitled Orange County Ethics and Disclosure Law. Notice is hereby given that the Orange County Legislature will meet at the auditorium of the Orange County Emergency Services Building, 22 Wells Farm Road, Goshen, New York, on the 22nd day of July, 2015, at 6 o'clock p.m. for the purpose of holding a public hearing and to solicit comments and concerns from the public with respect to the proposed Orange County Ethics and Disclosure Law prior to its adoption. Written comments shall be accepted by the clerk of the Orange County Legislature by personal delivery, by mail, or by email at jrampin at orangecountygov.com on or before July 22, 2015. Further notice is hereby given that copies of the proposed local law and its appendices are available at the office of the clerk of said county legislature, 15 Matthew Street, Suite 203, Goshen, New York, 10924, on the Orange County website at www.orangecountygov.com where they may be inspected or procured by any interested person during usual business hours. The notice was published in the July 15th issues of the Hudson Valley Press, Walk Hill Valley and Mid-Hudson Times, the July 17th issues of the Sentinel, Warwick Advertiser, Monroe Photo News, The Chronicle, News of the Highlands, Cornwall Local, and The Gazette. At this time, I would also ask that Legislative Council please summarize the Orange County Ethics and Disclosure Law. Oh, excuse me. Thank you. Um, in February of 2014, uh, the rules chairman, Dennis Simmons, at that time, and legislator Jeff Jeffrey Bergman uh, jointly initiated review of the county's code of ethics and disclosure law, local law number two of 1994, as amended from time to time. Uh, the following legislators are members of the rules committee, uh, former uh, legislator Dennis Simmons, uh, Michael Amo, Jeffrey Berkman, Melissa Bonacek, Katie Benelli, Kevin Hines, James Kulasek, Myrna Kennedy, and James DeSalvo. Most, if not all, legislators, members of the legislature, attended, participated in, and provided input on the draft local law. The legislative review of the Code of Ethics was independent of a special grand jury investigation initiated by Orange County District Attorney David M. Hoogler. The special grand jury was impaneled on February 28, 2014, following public concern over an Orange County legislature having been involved in possible conflicts pertaining to renovations at the Orange County Government Center. Concomitantly, the Board of Ethics conducted its own independent review and investigation into the same matter based upon the county's current ethics law and made certain findings against that individual. On April 25, 2014, the Orange County Grand Jury issued its report and findings that there was no criminal conduct by that subject legislator. The Grand Jury also reviewed the Orange County Ethics Law and made recommendations to the legislature for its revision. At the request of County Executive Stephen M. Newhouse, District Attorney, Attorney David Hoogler, Chairman uh, L. Stephen Brescher, and then Rules Chairman Dennis Simmons, County Attorney Langdon Chapman drafted a proposed revised Ethics and Disclosure Law which was delivered to the legislature on May 23, 2014. The proposed ethics law uh, consists, consisting of 48 pages incorporated recommendations from the grand jury and provided a revamp of the county's current local law. From February 19, 2014 to June 3, 2015, 
the Rules Committee met on a monthly basis at special meetings with the goal towards adopting a new ethics and disclosure law and disclosure forms. The committee was joined by members of the Board of Ethics and its counsel, Don Nickel, who provided invaluable insight and recommendations for change. The committee also reviewed many county policies, including the county's procurement code, hiring practices, executive orders regarding anti-nepotism, uh, real property deed sale protocol, as well as the state's ethics law under the general municipal law, the open meetings law, freedom of information law, legislative law, and state gifting provisions. The Rules Committee spent several meetings discussing and debating the composition of the Board of Ethics, the appointment of its members, and their powers. The committee submitted their draft proposed ethics law to the county executive and the county attorney for review and comments. On February 25, 2015, Mr. Newhouse shared his views on the proposed law and reserved the right to consider what is said at public hearings before making a final de decision on the proposed law. The county attorney appeared before the Rules Committee to discuss Mr. Newhouse's concerns. As a result, certain modifications were made to the document. The Rules Committee also reviewed and modifies, modified the rules and regulations for adjudicatory proceedings of the Ethics Board. And uh, last but not least, the committee spent several meetings revising the annual disclosure form. On June 3, 2015, the Rules Committee approved the final draft of the local law, now known as Local Law Introductory Number 6 of 2015, and set this public hearing. The purposes of this local law are to, one, establish standards of ethical conduct for officers, employees, and consultants of Orange County. Two, provide officers, employees, and consultants of Orange County, whether elected or appointed, paid or volunteer, with clear guidance on such standards. Three, to promote public confidence and integrity in the agencies and administrative offices of our local government. Four, facilitate the consideration of potential pro ethical problems before they arise, minimize unwarranted suspicion, and, and enhance the accountability of government to the people by requiring public disclosure of financial interests that may influence or be perceived to influence the actions of Orange County officers and employees. And five, provide for the effective administration of this local law. The local law repeals local law number two of 1994 as amended, but continues the present Board of Ethics. The board will consist of seven members, as it does now, with three being nominated by the chair of the legislature, three nominated by the county executive, and one member to be appointed by the six members of the Board of Ethics. All members are appointed by the county executive and confirmed by the legislature. All members of the board must be residents of Orange County and be eligible to register to vote. No member shall hold office of chair, vice chair, second vice chair, secretary or treasury, or sergeant at arms in a federal, state, or Orange County political party. The members of the Board of Ethics have staggered three-year terms of office. This local law also provides for the powers and duties of the Ethics Board, and they are one to it, uh, render advisory opinions, two to receive information and act on same, including a complaint or allegation from the general public concerning a conflict of interest of any officer or employee of Orange County, and three, to make recommendations for changes to the local law. The Board of Ethics is subject to the Open Meetings Law and Freedom of Information Law. The local law sets forth a standard of conduct for all county officers and, and employees, including standards established under the New York State General Municipal Law, recusal on actions or matters in which the individual may have a direct or specific benefit, anti-nepotism, and disclosure regarding contract relationships and, with, and county employment of relatives and family members and or members of the household. The local law prohibits the acceptance of gifts having an aggregate value of $70 or more in any 12-month consecutive period and incorporates state law exemptions for public officials. This local law incorporates New York State Civil Service Law, Section 107, Subdivision 3, 
which prohibits a county officer or employee from directly or indirectly using his or her authority or official influence to compel or induce any subordinate to participate in an election campaign or contribute to a political committee. Section 7 of this local law incorporates New York State General Municipal Law, uh, Section 800 and, and uh, subsequent uh, provisions therefore. Section 8 requires an annual disclosure by uh, those listed on uh, a list uh, as an appendix to the uh, local law and that this disclosure form must be filed no later than May 1st of each year or within 60 days of taking office. And it further requires an individual to file an amended disclosure form should, should there be a change in their circumstances which would require disclosure. Disclosure forms are subject to FOIL but with certain exempt information being redacted and the ethics forms for public officials will be posted on the Orange County website. Section 9 uh, sets forth penalties for offenses of the local law. It voids contracts in which there is an interested, it, there is an interest prohibited by this local law. It sets civil penalties of up to $10,000 or the value of any financial benefit obtained by the offender or the spouse, child, or member of the household, whichever is greater. It provides for criminal penalties in lieu of civil penalties uh, when, as referred to, the appropriate prosecutor uh, for class A misdemeanors, as well as uh, it provides for disciplinary uh, proceedings in accordance with state law or the uh, relative uh, bargaining agreement uh, for that individual. Section 10 sets forth uh, the prohibitions relating pro to private employment and uh, provides for a two-year ban from, pro from um, private employment um, after serving as a county officer in, or employee. It provides for, uh, the local law also provides for training by the Department of Human Resources uh, with the assistance of the Board of Ethics and it requires um, county contractors uh, to certify uh, that in the preceding year that the con uh, of the contract, um, let me just quote from the, uh, from the local law, uh, there's the certification states as follows that the undersigned contractor does not knowingly employ nor has in the year preceding the approval of the contract offered employment to or payment for services to any member of the county legislature, county department head, county executive, or county officer responsible for any determination with respect to recommending or approving the contract at issue unless such employment was turned down by such person. Um, uh, the, the local law uh, will be distributed within 90 days after it's adopted. Uh, adopted. Um, and it will be affected. Uh, and just and distributions of this will uh, be distributed by the clerk of the legislature. Uh, the effective date of this resolution of this uh, local law shall take it shall take effect on January first, twenty sixteen, except for section sixteen and seventy, uh, with seventeen, which shall take effect upon the filing with the secretary of state. Before we take any further comment, I would like to personally thank the district attorney and his staff, Chris Borick, Alan Dryan. I'd also like to thank the county executive, Steve Newhouse, the county attorney, Langton Chapman, counsel to the Board of Ethics, Don Nickel, and the members of the Board of Ethics, who especially with Chairman uh, Gail Cecina, attended every single rules committee meeting. Uh, each and every member of the Orange County Legislature, thank you very much for your wisdom, your hard work in this important issue. And of course, the staff of the legislature who devoted an enormous amount of time to this effort. I would particularly like to thank all the members of the Rules Committee, who I believe everybody is here today, and certainly last but not least, the individual that basically shepherded us through this long, arduous journey, Antoinette Reed, our Legislative Council. Thank you. At this time, I will open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak, I would ask them to please sign with the Deputy Clerk at the table in the front of the room here, uh, this stage. Please state your name when you're coming to the microphone. Give your name, 
uh, your town of record, and there will be a three-minute limit on all speakers. So at this point, the hearing is open, and it believes we have a speaker. <coughs> well, you, we don't need any introduction. I'm going to ask you just so the record can pick it up. Sure. My name is Langdon Chapman. I'm the county attorney. I just want to make it clear I'm speaking solely from myself as a department head and here, not for the county executive at this point. I'm not commenting generally on his desires on the law or not. The only concern I have with respect to this local law as a department head is with respect to the Council to the Board of Ethics. Laws, of course, are made not about people but about circumstances. I will tell you that it is my firm belief you avoid a potential problem down the road that if you have a Board of Ethics Council who has no other interest with the Orange County government. I know that, and this is not a criticism of the existing Ethics Council, who I have the highest personal and professional regard for, but certainly I have a problem in that litigators in my department litigate against this same individual who is counsel to the Board of Ethics, sometimes under very harsh circumstances. And it seems to me that if, I'm not ever aware of any concerns about the county attorney's department, unfortunately, but if there ever was a circumstance where an opinion had to be rendered about the propriety of an action of an attorney in my department, particularly one who is in the middle of sometimes active and sometimes emotional litigation with the very firm represented by the Council of the Ethics Board, that I think that creates an inherent conflict. And I would respectfully ask that you consider creating an alternative council who, at least for any dealings ever with the county attorney's department, would be available to advise the, the Board of Ethics. I think it's true for all circumstances, but certainly when my office, my department, I should say, has an adverse relationship with that very law firm that then is going to go behind closed doors and talk about something that could restrict the financial or other business dealings of attorneys or families of attorneys, I think there ought to be somebody who's completely pure, completely unbiased, has no other relationship with the lawyers in the county attorney's department who are really clashing with that firm in court, sometimes, as I said, with great hostility, um, emotionally, on, on serious financial matters of consequence to the county. And that would be my request to you, strictly with respect to attorneys in my department and counsel the ethics board. And if you're amenable to that, I'm happy to draft it. If you're not, I stated my objections on the record. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate your comments. I appreciate your coming forward. Is there anyone else that would like to speak at this public hearing at this time? Uh, at this point, I will enter. Well, no, I don't. I can just close the public hearing myself. So I will close this public hearing. I thank you all for attending, especially my colleagues that drove here just for this. I appreciate it. I appreciate you joining us. And again, sincerely, thank you for all your work that you put in on this. Board.